Welcome to Image Processing with ArcGIS Pro. 12 YouTube videos summarize image processing lab exercises available in a step-by-step -step lab manual that accompanies this textbook. Download the lab manuals at the site shown and obtain more textbook information at the second site shown publisher's website. Download the lab manual and data used in the lab exercises if you want to use the step-by-step -step instructions and process the imagery and DEMs while viewing the YouTube videos. The examples used in the videos and lab manual are discussed and shown in the textbook, improving GIS student understanding of essential remote sensing principles and technology while learning how to process and enhance images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. The lab manual, shown, a page is shown in the upper right, and 12 YouTube videos are designed for GIS instructors, students, and users who want to do their own processing, enhancement, and information extraction of satellite and airborne images and DEMs using ArcGIS Pro. You can see the 12 exercises, the tutorials um, listed here. They cover um, a broad range of image processing tasks, algorithms, and help you find where these tasks are located on the various menus in ArcGIS Pro. The lab exercises require ArcGIS Spatial Analyst Extension. Contact Jealous at ls-geospatial.com for any questions or comments and visit the publisher's website for more information and resources on the textbook. Lab 3 processes Landsat multispectral imagery. You can see in the first paragraph this particular scene from Wyoming is examined in, in depth in the textbook. The topics we'll be covering are here. Um, we'll be creating a multispectral data set from the individual bands. We'll create different color composites to bring out different features for our interpretation. We'll look at some measuring tools and the edge enhancement tool. Landsat is a remarkable sensor. You can see um, this is out of the textbook. And the bands we'll be processing are six bands that collect data at 30 meter resolution. And there are bands 2, 3, 4, which is blue, green, red. Band 5 is the near IR. Band 6 and 7 are SWIR. This is SWIR 1 and SWIR 2, which is short wave infrared. Down at the bottom is the wavelengths they have. Here's the reflectance. Here on the right side, we're looking at the six bands in our catalog. You can see in a directory on Microsoft or Apple, each band has got a, the image as a geotiff with the TFW, which contains coordinate information and information about the whether the pixel's been rotated, things like that. And down here is the metadata. The metadata is very extensive. And it tells you, you know, when the image was acquired, lots of technical information that you need if you're going to do convert to reflectance from the radiance, the original digital numbers. So the metadata is always there available as a text file. We'll drag these six bands into our map. See they load pretty quickly. I'll collapse them. You can see they go from 0 to 255 which is pure black to pure white pixels. 8-bit data. And if we want to stretch one you can see we go to symbology and we'll get a warning. We haven't collected statistics on these yet. And if you have collected statistics, like on near IR, I collected statistics here, you won't have that warning. And you can tell when you look at your directory that the near IR has got this .aux.xml. That means statistics have been calculated. So if we were going to process the black and white, we would want to calculate statistics. Now we want to create a composite image of these six combined into one data set. There are at least two ways to stack these or create, put these six bands into one data set. Um, you can go over to imagery and you've got this a process and you can just click this button. You have to know that the word is composite in um, Esri and over here in GeoProcess we could search for composite bands. Kind of creates a single raster data set for multiple bands, which allows you to do this multispectral processing. So here you can see 
we'll start inputting our bands sequentially. So you don't have to put all six in. You can select those bands that are of interest. And then we'll name this in our output file Landsat six band dot tiff and run. You can see how quickly it created the six bands. And when you look at this, the colors aren't quite right. Rocks aren't blue. And we have to think about why is that? And if we go back to our options, remember how we set up our options in raster and imagery? We said if we have a a multispectral data set, we're going to load band one into the red gun, band two into the green gun, and band three into blue. But actually what we want to do um, with this data set is blue is one, green is two, and, and red is three. That's why we have to change the colors. We could change it here um, going forward, or we'll change it at this place with our symbology tool. And now we have a, a natural color image. So let's put a, a little stretch on this, a little more dramatic colors. There's a really, really good tool in imagery, this information, image information tool. And as you hover over any individual pixel, it shows the reflectance of that pixel. So if we go down into the vegetation, you can see on the right side, this is blue, green, red, near infrared, which is sensitive to vegetation in our two sphere. You can see that really healthy field has got a very high near IR, not so high here, and, and really low where there's not um, the vegetation. So you can roam around and see the difference in the reflectance for all six bands using this tool. So we'll zoom back out, zoom to layer, and what we want to do next is build color composites. And so there's traditional ones in Landsat. Um, the natural color is actually in the OLI system is bands 4, 3, 2. But we see it in ArcMap as 3, 2, 1. The color infrared is near IR, red, and green. Then there's a total infrared. These are wavelengths beyond anything our eyes can see. So we'll, we'll load the band number 4, 5, 6. And the enhanced color is favorable because it puts the near IR in the green gun. So we see vegetation as shades of, of green. So I'm going to do like in our previous lab where we're going to put four those four enhancements as in different tabs so that we can do our link the views and zoom in and out and compare the four. And to do that, we go over to the appearance tab. You just have to keep track of all these tabs. That's one of the issues. And I'll go to band combination and I'll go to custom. And three, two, one, I'll call natural add. And what I want to do is I want to save this as a GIS ready image. I've got a stretch on it, export to raster, lab three output, call it. Natural color tiff. We're going to save the stretch we have on it, and we'll force RGB, and we'll export. So I've got this new three-banded image here, and I'm just going to go through and make the other three color composites. So I'll do one more. I go to band combination, custom. This is going to be a CIR band four. And the reason we're doing this is to so we can take and analyze these band combinations. Symbology, 432. Turn this one off so we can see our 432. I had to turn the top one off so that we could actually see this color infrared. And, and maybe that's a little too bright, the colors. So I can just change this a little bit by changing the standard deviations. Tone it down a bit. I'll say, okay, that's more acceptable. And I do the same thing. I go to my six band image. I've got a three band enhanced color infrared. I'll change 
named to CIR. Notice it's 8-bit unsigned for CRGB. And we have our second GIS ready um, image on the top. So I'll do the other two and then we'll, we'll uh, work with those. Now I've completed the four, so let's take a look at them. So here's natural color, color infrared, total IR, and enhanced color. Now we put them in the output folder. If we go over here to the output folder, we don't see them. But I know they've been created. So I can go over to my Microsoft and say, hey, there's the enhanced color, and it's got the, the uh, statistics calculated. My total IR, my CIR, and my natural color. So I've made them here, and I say, well, why aren't they showing up in my catalog? So I'll go ahead and refresh the catalog. I'll close, refresh. Doesn't show up. I'll close the folder, and maybe that'll help. Refresh. It still doesn't show up. And what I've discovered is you have to go up and save the project, and then it'll show up. I'm going to save it after I do one more thing, which is to put these into the tabs. And then I'm going to save this project with the four tabs. So the way we do that is go up to Insert, New Map. We'll come up with this Map 1. And that's where I'm going to put the natural color. So it takes a while, so I'll pause it while it's opening up this first map. So it's made the first map. I'll do it again. I'm going to do it four times. New map. Takes a while to load it on this system. Not sure why. It's a pretty fast computer. Now you can see I've created the extra tabs. This is going to be the six band natural color, color IR, total IR, enhanced color. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this as a new project because I'm so impressed by um, having the tabs and I want to have this preserved so I can go back to it in the future. So it's Landsat for color combos. Now notice when I saved it, what shows up? My enhanced images. So now I'm going to go back and remember how we changed these. So the first map we can just say, I'm going to call six bands. And I'll turn all these off. And the only one that will be turned on is the, the six bands. I can turn these guys off too, the individual bands. And this is, this is important to do because then I can, I can make another color combination out of this. So map one, I'm going to drag natural color in and save it as natural color properties. I'm going to do the same thing and, and fill these with the appropriate enhanced three-banded uh, color composite. Now you can see I've got the natural color, color IR, total IR, and, and enhanced color. And, and so what I can do now is I go to this view, I go to link views, center and scale. I can zoom in, say on just the vegetation, this is irrigated vegetation, and and look at the different color composites by just clicking on this and do my analysis here. And if I wanted to see this, the response, and I can go over to the image information and see the response in any given pixel. And if I did that, I would change my appearance to nearest neighbor. So I would be looking at individual pixels. So let's go over to the geological area and I go to natural color, color infrared, total IR, you see a little more, and then this enhanced color, bringing out tremendous information on the, on the geology. Then we go down to the town of Thermopolis and see how these different combinations help you map what you're trying to um, interpret. So if I zoom out, zoom to layer, over in this area, I 
there's a runway. And that's what we'll look at next. We use the measuring tool um, to see how long this runway is. So now we're zoomed in over here at the runway. I'll switch over to catalog so we don't have that bouncing histogram on the right. You can see in natural color what the runway looks like. Short wavelengths. So we go to color infrared, a little longer wavelengths. Enhanced color. And then total IR. Which one is the sharpest? Is the longer wavelength imagery sharper than the shorter wavelength imagery? Now if we want to map um, say what's the length of this we go over to map measure measure distance and um, this runway is 1975 meters long and what's interesting it has all sorts of I don't I have no idea what this is but um, lots of lots of options in ArcGIS Pro and now we'll look at edge enhancement tools so I'll go back to the natural color, fill this scene in. And what we want to do is, is improve the, the ability for us to interpret lines, straight segments on this imagery. And if I go back to geoprocessing, and a lot of times, see you're, you're in one set here, you have to do this little arrow to get back to the original. Well, most people call it filtering. But if I type that in, that isn't, um, that's just one pass and that's not very good. And if I go convolution, which is what it's called, it's, it's not in our toolbox. But if I go over to imagery and I go to those raster functions and I type in convolution, which is what this is called. And what we want to do is, is we have the tool then, convolution tool. And it'll pass a filter, a box filter that's explained in the textbook and in other sources. And it'll sharpen the image or blur the image. And it can be no bias in direction or with bias. So we click this tool and there's what the filter looks like. It's a, a nine cell filter that goes over every single pixel, changes the actual digital number. So we pick our natural color and let's just do the sharpen tool and it's going to sharpen a bit and then add that back into the image so it, it it's very pleasing what it what it does to the image see how fast it is we've sharpened the image just a little bit with the sharpen tool and maybe it's adding back 95 percent i don't know what the algorithm does but let's let's go to the the one that's we go back to natural color and we go to more sharpen so you see there different numbers, a little higher, a little edgier. And you can see how we've really sharpened between this is the original, that's the more um, sharpened. If you don't want to overdo it, maybe that'll be the, the one to pick, the just sharpen. If I go to convolution again, and I go back to natural color and we've got our natural color turned on let's go to sharpen three by three now this is not going to do any add back into the original image it's just going to sharpen this it'll be a much harsher image and we've really enhanced the lines and if we go and say well I want to blur the image Go back to natural color. Smoothing three by three. You see how the numbers change in the filter? And each one is, is multiplied by the pixels. It's, it's pretty intense. Like I say, read the textbook because it's incredible how well it works. And so that's, that's the blur. So you can see the difference between the original. And when I go to what the sharpen tool does. So that concludes the uh, discussion on uh, working with Landsat multispectral data.